Oh, it's getting all intense up in the cantina. <laughs> Six months of searching for you, and this is what I find. The bartender keeps throwing up her hands, going, God, you guys are making such a you, mess. I told you to leave. <laughs> I told you, yeah. At least tip. <laughs> <laughs> See, Piers, I think he's the kind of guy that leaves an extra, like, you know, bigger tip, but I don't see his Chris being the guy that would tip. <laughs> no, Chris would give a quarter. <laughs> yeah. He's bare minimum. He's like 8%. Piers always goes back and apologizes and then leaves extra <laughs> yeah. on behalf of Chris. He's such a good guy. <laughs> is that dude wearing a life preserver? He is. <laughs> you never know. Safety comes first. He's wearing a Marty McFly life preserver in the background there. <laughs> So, looking back on, on playing this part, do you think yeah. your voice has changed? Um, I think my voice I think my voice uh, went down an octave doing the character like in real time. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was like it was like a year of, of going like you know down here like this as peers, um, and I yeah I think uh, I think I had like a second puberty okay. doing this role. <laughs> Hang on, AJ. It looks like uh, I did get kicked out of the game, so I'm going to come back into it. And then we'll add, uh, I think, do I have Adam or do you have Adam, AJ? I, I know I have Adam. I don't think I have him on mine. All right, hang on. Let me uh, go back in so we can jump into the same server. Enjoy underscore cut. Hey, I'm friend of the creator of You Killed My Marco and all the other songs. He's glad you liked it. Oh, cool. <laughs> yes. Random. Uh, Welcome. <laughs> that's, that's random. We have to play it. We have to play it. Okay. All right. While we're fixing uh, our connection here and getting everybody involved, uh, let's play that real quick since it's been requested. YouTube, You Killed My Marco. <laughs> Counting down the top 40 hits of all time. Up next, You Killed My Marco, requested by Christopher Emerson. Hey, he's done a lot there. <laughs> Here it is. Thanks. 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 Oh, God. Thanks. That's the right one? <laughs> oh, it's so good. Thanks. 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 the captain everybody loves that scream <laughs> no! Drop the bass. <laughs> You're not gonna lose us, Dana. Dana, Captain. Dana, Dana. There's a train coming. Dana, Dana. Captain. Dana, Dana. Fight us, Dana. Because after on the road, never seen a mutation like that before. Kill my Marco. Fight us, Dana. Because after on the road, never seen a mutation like that before. Kill my Marco. Fight us, Dana. Because after on the road. You killed my Margo! <laughs> Chris, we need to stay calm. <laughs> After what she's done to us, thanks. How many of our men are dead because of that bitch? Thanks. 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 Only one. We wipe out the hot guy. <laughs> 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 Nice. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's my new ringtone. <laughs> That's it. Got to do it. <laughs> or I should say, or I should say, back to being my ringtone. Okay, everybody can see uh, the video fine. 
Let's um let's see here. Should I reinvite you? Yeah, reinvite me, please. See everybody listening right now, you came for the gameplay, but you stayed for the tunes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get back in it. So should be good to go now. All right. It said <laughs> you sent me the invite and I accepted it. But I'm still not in it. Come on. Mm -hmm. One more time. Okay. Last time it took me right into it. And invite to play. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's play a game maybe. Okay, right, let me try going back to the main menu and reinvite. Yeah, do you. that. Do that. We're gonna get this set up so we can actually play the game together. So we eat. So we, yeah, we ain't doing that AI thing. <laughs> yeah, so for everybody watching, again, thank you guys for joining us. As you know, uh, Christopher yeah, Emerson thank you. is here. He is the voice of Piers Nevins. Um, he's going to be talking to us about the game as we play it, and we're going to talk about him, um, his acting career, what it was like making this game, and just talk about some of the scenes as, as they come up as well. We're also doing the Extra Life Marathon still, uh, raising money for the kids. So if you guys want to contribute, please do. It would be much appreciated. If not, we appreciate your support, and we appreciate you being here. And whenever there go, play game. I appreciate that song. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you have it's, it's totally stuck in your head right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> I just keep hearing Captain. <laughs> <laughs> you killed my know. Marco. <laughs> you killed my Marco. <laughs> After that, they're on their own. <laughs> Never seen a mutation like that before. <laughs> killed my Mark. You killed Dude, my it's, mark. Total, it's totally stuck in my head. <laughs> All right, let's get serious now. Come on, Getting we got Joabo. We got Joabo to hunt. Let's go. <laughs> it's a serious business. To face the truth, accept responsibility. Right, That's the only way. We need a link for the donation. The only way. Uh, I posted back. the extra life link on my Twitter. HQ to Alpha Team. No change to your mission. Suppress the bioterror um, outbreak while proceeding to. Are any of our mods here? No. Adam. Ah, oh, shit. I need to. Hang on. Let's get past this right. scene. And then um, I'm going to give. Zombie, there we go. <laughs> Zombie, can you post that link for. um, What's B? For uh, Extra Life? That was aggressive. Calm down. It, it can only go up from here, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> we started off great. Yep. Teamwork. I started it off correctly. You guys have played this before. Right? It's been a while. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's been a long time. All right. Oh! <laughs> that's uh, that's going to come back later. <laughs> Adam, oh, I guess, it usually uh, does. If you want to... Not Adam. I was thinking... Can we you add Adam uh, in three. as a mod zombie? HQ copy. All right, so Christopher, what um, yeah, what did you do before you started acting? Oh, what did I do before I started acting? Believe it or not, I was a professional juggler. True seriously? story. Seriously? Yeah, seriously, I grew up being a professional juggler from the age nine, like through my teens. Um, being on stage, like comedy, juggling, magic stuff, riding a six foot unicycle, juggling torches, machetes, axes. Oh wow! Um, and yeah, that was my jam for for a while back there as a performer and. And uh, it kind of led to more performing and public speaking and acting and stuff. And that was, that was how was a kid growing up. Can I get a that. Excuse me. Huh. This that's crazy. I, did, that's, I had no idea. <laughs> you know, let me turn my game volume down. Look at this. Yeah. How's the volume like, on my side for everybody as well as for you, uh, Christopher? Um, I would say for me, if it, as long as it doesn't take away from the viewing experience for everyone else, I would say the game volume is a little bit down for me. All right. Too, uh, too low or too loud? It, the game volume being a little too loud. It's uh, hard to hear you sometimes. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm going to turn it down a little bit here. Okay. Do you do... Sweet. Okay, <laughs> okay. We should be good now. <laughs> so you were a juggler. That's interesting. I, I was a juggler in Reno, Nevada, in the showrooms and doing opening act stuff. 
Oh, that's cool. Juggling, juggling all kinds of kinds of stuff. Fire was the best. Fire was the crowd please. Everybody loved it. So watching uh, watching a teenager maybe set himself on fire or not. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, so that was that. It kind of led to acting, and the acting led to voiceover because I was broke. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I was like, I'm creative. I'm an artist. I don't want a real job. What else can I do? And so, and so I, uh, I, I had a little bit of experience with voiceover when I was a kid, uh, just kind of local where I grew up, some radio commercials and stuff. But I had no idea that you could do it as a career. I had zero idea that I could do it as a career as like an adult. Is that something that adults can even do and like pay the rent? Yeah. And uh, and so, yeah, I kind of went down the rabbit hole of the voiceover world of cutting demos and sending it out to agencies and stuff. And and it worked. Um, I somebody uh, picked me up. Agency represented me, started going out and and I started booking stuff. And, uh, and it's been like my most awesome favorite adventure in my life ever since. Thanks. Did you burn yourself a lot juggling fire? I guess I Unless you can say doing voiceover. Um, <laughs> I, think I'm, I think I'm doing it wrong. Um, yeah, yeah, a couple times. I almost set my house on fire. Oh, boy. Yeah, my, my, my parents were thrilled. Yeah, I bet. Ollie tends to do that just by looking at things. Yeah, I have a habit of uh, setting things on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely accidental, but it just happens. Give them a smolder. <laughs> I say it's accidental, but it's usually on purpose. <laughs> and so... You're like you're like a little Drew Barrymore. <laughs> Drew Barrymore, is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just throwing them out there. See, see what sticks. <laughs> Ooh, he wants Bladoosh. So, oh, uh, no. juggling led to acting. Yeah. That's an interesting transition. And then into voice acting. Yep, and then, and then voice acting. And uh, some video games here and there, like this one in front of us now. And, yeah. Uh, lots of commercial stuff, lots of radio stuff, TV ads, voice of various campaigns. Okay. For like Southwest Airlines and Starbucks and Coca-Cola, big brand stuff and industrial things, business to business stuff for uh, Adobe, Microsoft, and all that. Nice. Nice. Tends to be a different. Tends to be a different voice than peers here. Yeah. Though you know, I'm like, not saying you know, Starbucks double shot, bring it. You know, it's not. <laughs> Captain. You know, <laughs> get your ass to a McDonald's now. Uh, I would go. Which I think would actually be cool though. Maybe they're missing out on a that's, on that's a demo. That's a solid point. It's a good ad campaign right there. <laughs> yeah. Go go get down. Eat a Big Mac. Yeah. <laughs> Piers Kachu says, I like your name, by the way. When delivering pizza leads to voice acting, call me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. You'd be surprised, though. From what I, you know, talking to the amount of uh, voice actors that I've interviewed, um, it's the little stuff, you know, the commercials, and, and even you, you're on a, a higher level with these major brands, but that's what pays the bills. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's you know, it's nice when it works. It's not, it's not, uh, uh, it doesn't it doesn't have anything in the way of stability, you know. Yeah, because you gotta um, get the jobs as they come up to you as as you're being offered and audition for everything. And... Yeah, I basically become employed and unemployed every five minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so and I and I have no idea when the next uh, job is or paycheck. But you know, it just kind of all seems to roll along and everything just seems to work itself out. It has embraced me and I have embraced it and we are one. I am one with the force and the force is one with me. Um, and uh, and yeah, and it's just it's it's so fun. It's it's the most fun job ever. This this project in particular, because we did this over the course of like a year, of um, of re- just many many recording sessions. Uh, some of it as just voice reference for the for for uh, motion capture at the beginning, and then as as it developed, you'd see it in real time coming together. It would go from like wireframe polygons to to actual gameplay and stuff as the as Capcom worked on it overseas and just yeah. to watch the whole project come together over the course of about a year as far as my involvement but I mean they were working on it a good year or two before that um, was so awesome it's just a, it's it's I, I, I don't know of another area of voiceover mm-hmm. specifically that that is more um, unique I guess you could say because you know you know, like a radio campaign or a television commercial or something like that, it's super fun but it's all kind of around a certain vibe right like kind of selling you Big Macs or getting right, you in right. the know with some new technology or here's your new iPhone but with uh, with motion capture with um, you know having to 
die every 20, like, you know, 20 ways, <laughs> riddled with bullets, death or decapitation, death or, you know, screaming after someone for backup and all that. You just get it. You get into it. It's almost like going to the gym. Like you do these marathon sessions of exactly what you're looking at with the gameplay now, right? The breathing, yeah. the running, the grunting, the streaming. Um, and, uh, and, and it's seriously like, like it's like you went to the gym for the past three hours. You're exhausted, exhausted afterwards. Yeah. Your vocal cords are fried. You're sweating. And you just got this giant happy, you got this giant smile on your face going like, wow, I'm getting paid for this too. You know? <laughs> so, it's awesome. I mean, talking about the motion cap part, um, I've heard the different stories and stuff, but was that a new experience to you being a, in the motion cap? Um, at that time, because this is a while ago, so at that time, I believe it was my first facial capture. Okay. I had done body motion capture for yeah. acting stuff, uh, like a, uh, d d d a short film, an animated short film series for the uh, Robert Zemeckis alumni program at USC. Uh, I, I knew a director there that I previously worked with, and so we were doing. So he was doing some really cool body motion capture stuff for acting. Yeah. Um, you know, a film like that, and and so I was doing that a bit, and I did that a couple other places. But this was the first time where I actually did no body capture for this. That this the body capture was all. Uh, oh, it's so bad. It's been so long. What's his name? Great guy. I'll think of it. But uh, but uh, he he did the body capture. Adam is is the face. Right. Adam Adam is the is the face. And um, uh, oh, it's not Ruben. It's not Ruben. Did uh, Ruben Chris did Chris? Red. Yeah, I don't remember yeah, who did Pierce. Um, Oh, he's a great guy too, and it's gonna kill me until I think of his name. But um, but yeah, so between the three of us, between between the face face modeling, my voice, and so, and the facial capture of the expressions, and then the body, um, uh, all coming together, that that was that was the magic that it, you know came to together to be peers. But uh, but for me personally, it was my first time doing facial capture. Okay. So you gotta do a lot of exaggerations on facial moments, and, like movements and everything, to, I guess, like the grimacing and the, and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of exaggeration to it, but um, but like I remember, I remember being blown away about the detail I could bring to a character because I did a lot of animation and video game voicing before, but without the facial capture. Yeah. And so every single, say, character attributes little mm -hmm. little character ticks or personality quirks or something you had to i i i came from the school of you got to put that in the voice yeah. right doing the facial capture i realized it opened up this whole new thing for 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 me you know like i said first time doing it you go wow this is this is so cool is i didn't have to only put it in the voice you know yeah. i could i could also i could also do it like in a facial twitch or a grimacing like you know, being upset and angry and that it comes through both in the voice and also maybe just like a unique way that Piers decides to get inside his own head or fearful or, you know, doubting himself or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And, and I could actually put that in the cutscenes. And that was so cool. That was, and this is a while ago now. It's amazing how much the technology has advanced in such a short time because, you know, the, the technology goes so fast. It's like what? What is it? this came out? What six years ago? We talking yeah. about? Yeah. And in that time, you, I mean, it's like just leaps and bounds of. of I would. I would. I, I've, I haven't done the high res scanning stuff that they do for, um, say, like Avatar and stuff. Yeah. Now, man, I would love to get my hands on some of that or book something where you can do that because it's just uh, just a whole new world, a whole new world for performers and voice actors, and it's yeah, it's the future. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's becoming more than like uh, with like Resident Evil, for example, they scanned uh, Resident Evil 7. They scanned actors in as the body, like physically just to look. But the mocap is done by the actors themselves now for the most part. Yeah. Um, so it's becoming yeah. a full performance and not just voice, not just mocap body, not just mocap face. But you're getting these actors in that are doing full performances. It's just on screen. It'll look like someone else, whoever the character design is. By the way, right, right. Uh, zombie, um, the guy you banned, Severin, is my brother. <laughs> but yes, what he said was a little inappropriate. <laughs> but I wait, wait, the what? Sorry, I missed that one. No, um, in the chat, um, my brother who's in, visiting me in town is watching the, the stream right now. 
as well as hanging out in the room watching and listening. <laughs> he, he commented something that me and him, it's an inside thing between inside us. Joke. Inside joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. I do it all the time. <laughs> I'm stuck. Our guys are blocking me. That's pretty interesting, though. Um, and you said it was a year process. They brought you in initially for what? How did, I mean, what was that whole process like from beginning to end? The beginning phases uh, was what matching lip flaps and stuff, and then it was then became the actual acting part to it. So yeah, I mean, like when I first came on board, uh, obviously production was full, full, you know, in terms of gameplay layout, uh, storylines, and just mm -hmm. the whole thing, you know, drawn out. That it it was time to start getting performers in the booth, and um, I read down a sample that came through my agency, uh, Liam O'Brien, who. Uh, is amazing and of course uh, now like what critical role superstar um, <laughs> and um, uh, uh, d d d he was directing it and that was my first time meeting Kim he directed my audition and we uh, I got to work with him and so we sat down all of us it was so fun like you got all the uh, performers together before we even began to make sure they were so detailed Capcom and, and Liam were so uh, detailed about the process, about the production process, that we had this pizza party with everybody. Like, uh, yeah. Courtney was there, Matthew was there. Um, uh, you guys probably all know who I'm talking about, but of yeah. course the voices Courtney of, Taylor, voices of Ada, Chris. voices of Chris, you know, right. the, and Leon, and, and, Leon and, and just everybody was there to have a pizza party so that Liam could basically go through the entire legacy, the entire canon of everything, the story and how it culminates into 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 Resident Evil 6 and what okay. we're going to do with, with the storylines so that we had so you know if, if we had a lack of knowledge or gaps in knowledge or needed refreshers we were all on the same page knowing exactly what we were getting into with these characters and picking up and, and knowing where the stories are picking up and uh, and that was cool that, I thought that was so detailed and awesome of Capcom to want to honor uh, every detail and nuance of of everything that's preceded 6 right. Uh, with the with the actors and just knowing you know this is where you're coming from, and uh, and so yeah so that kicked it off that was that was that was day one, um, yeah. and that and that kicked off uh, an entire year of starting to get behind yeah getting in the booth and and uh, it started there was no there's no facial capture so at first they're just kind of these. Um, uh, you know, like, like default face. I'm sure there's a name for it, but just kind of this default face, this sort of static face that was on the characters that you're. That, uh, well, I, actually, I, I'm even getting ahead of myself. That came later. At first, it's just recording stuff. It's just, it's just, you know, tons and tons of one-line callouts and screams and and all that. Just starting to fill in all the pieces that Capcom needs okay. uh, to put in there. And then, and then later, more the detail, the cutscenes. Um, uh, more pivotal moments that are more uh, detail in their animation during the gameplay or the very elaborate cutscenes all came much later. Um, I'd say I'd say halfway through that that long year uh, when we started putting dots on our faces and doing the 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 mocap. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, how far was the story developed in the beginning? Were they still writing it as they were fixing the game, or was it pretty much all solid from the beginning? And then you guys. So they came in, did your table reads and your background information, all that stuff. Yeah, it was solid from the beginning. They, okay. they, yeah, they had every detail of the characters. Like the minor things would maybe be tweaks or minor rewrites or just things that sounded better. Um, maybe things that uh, needed to bounce, uh, maybe bounced back and forth a couple too many times in translation because Capcom and the producers and stuff, uh, you know, lots of lots of Japanese and English yeah. going back going back and forth, and so. So you know, little things to kind of iron things out, and that was that was the you know genius and and uh, awareness of Liam, um, making sure that that sounded good and that that all that was there. But yeah, it was little tweaks here and there. But they had they knew right from the start the story they were telling, okay. and and where this was going. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, Liam, I know has has done a lot for the company, and he's really taken off and and developed this awesome career of directing. Uh, who else was on there as far as um, staffing wise like localization and who else worked with you on that kind of stuff uh let's see so who i was mostly in touch with so ruben langdon he at the time owned uh the production studio that we right. worked in so 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 he he of course his involvement as as redfield mm -hmm. and then it was his mocap studio i think he sold it off since then but i don't know that's 
I, I'm not yeah. sure, but uh, but and and the production staff there was super cool. So I I mostly worked. I saw I saw him a few times. Hung out um, Mari and Kumi. Mari and Kumi were were there. Um, uh, like on behalf of the production studio and liaisoning with Capcom and they were really awesome in terms of keeping the whole ship moving forward in the right direction and and really like all my like my 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 guy my go-to my the person who I uh, am under constant direction is is Liam okay. you know so so Liam O'Brien um, was my yeah, was was my was my boss. <laughs> you know, was my yeah. was was my go-to in terms of where we take this and and who I'm really you know working with uh, hand in hand every step of the way. And um, uh, and once in a while, once in a while you'd see the occasional other actor bump into Matthew Mercer for a second and talk or uh, Roger Craig Smith and you know yeah. just as we're like one person's leaving us leaving you know their three hours and the other person's starting their three hours. Yeah, rotation. But, uh, how many booths do they have? Um, they got a bunch, but the nature of this, uh, you know, some games are created differently, um, where you can have multiple actors, or say like uh, Uncharted, yeah. where they're actually recording the mocap and uh, for the sake of animation, because at least in the Uncharted that I know, I'm not sure about the very latest yeah. one or ones, but um, they would animate the faces. And so there was no facial mocap, but the body mocap was captured at the same time as the voice performances, okay. Okay. right? So, so all of that was captured on set. Um, and, and so you could actually do full scenes. For us, the way the format was, is you're in a booth by yourself, mocapping your face and capturing the vocal performances. And so everything, I'm trying to think, did we ever act with each other? I don't, never. Yeah, everything was, everything was individual, so. So all of these interactions are actually all of the actors separate at huh. different times okay. recording their their part of it, you know, and 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 sometimes reading against picture. Like if I recorded first a cutscene, then Roger Craig Smith gets to gets to read against my previous recordings, you know, oh, kind okay, of like cool. answer, like kind of ask and answer back and forth, you know, yeah. or I, I or I would get to do the same if he'd already recorded his cutscene. But uh, but yeah, everything was everything was individual. Just uh, us alone in a booth with uh, silly dots on our face. <laughs> that's that's cool though that you guys. Um, so if you got that too though, I mean you weren't always the first one to record them. Assuming sometimes you get to go in and hear the other person's part. I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. Just was, did you yeah. first all the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was yeah it was back and forth. It was okay. just kind of what what was in the production schedule at that yeah. time, and it was. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of random, but balanced out to be about even in terms of who was recording first or, uh, yeah, what was available in terms of any sort of like scratch track. Okay, oh, is that what they call it, a scratch track? A scratch track would be done if it wasn't actually what's going to make it into the game, right? So, like sometimes, um, some uh, I'm trying to think. So sometimes the scratch track would actually be recordings from the set. So like Ruben and the fantastic gentleman who I can't think of that body capped. Um, peers, they would actually recite the scenes. Like we would have video yeah. of them on set doing the body capture, and they're actually verbalizing and acting out the scenes, right, with their with their bodies and with their voices. And we'd actually have those recordings too. So sometimes, I, if Roger Craig Smith actually hadn't laid down the final track yet, I'd actually be reading against Ruben, Ruben Langdon's yeah. audio as uh, Chris on the mocap set, on the body <laughs> mocap set. So yeah, so just kind of whatever's available like that. Sometimes it's just totally wild and there's nothing to play on. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's just kind of kind of what works. That's interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a fascinating process. It's fun. It's super fun. And for a year, how frequently were you coming in and, and recording? Was it like a daily, weekly? Oh, let's see. So out of that year or any given month, um, I would say there'd be some gaps, and then all of a sudden you'd have like ten sessions. Um, inside of just like a couple weeks, and then like three, or, and then like three or four weeks would go by of of, of, of quiet, at least on my side, and uh -huh. and then and then yes, yeah, st stack a bunch of sessions. So I would say in total over the course of a year, there's probably for me personally, I think I went into the studio 20, 25 times. Okay. 
Was there any lines that uh that still stick with you? Because you we talked about Captain. this earlier. <laughs> Captain, yeah. Um, uh, I think my voice. I think, I think I have a permanent scratch somewhere deep in my larynx because of that. <laughs> because of that line and screaming that line thousands of times. <laughs> um, or uh, what? Or what else? Lines that I like the most. Um, I like the. I like the. Uh, uh, I like the the steak line comes to mind for some reason. The steak, you know? <laughs> I, I get steak around here, yeah, like back home. <laughs> um, or when they're or uh, or when they're fighting, the, the big you know Chris Pierce uh, breakup scene. <laughs> <laughs> the breakup scene. <laughs> the roid the the uh, the roid raging scene. The, raging. the man bro breakup. <laughs> yeah. Look at that! Look at that! That's that's foreshadowing something, huh? <laughs> Look at that guy's arm. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Spoilers. Hmm. Spoilers. Spoilers. If you, you haven't seen haven't this. Years, what's wrong with you? Did, um, did they tell you from the beginning, like, your story of your, your the whole arc of your character? Uh, did I know the arc of the character at the beginning? That's a good question. I, I think I did, but just in a general verbal form. Like, I think Liam told me... Because I don't think we had like full scripts where I was really actually reading what was going to happen. We 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 really got it in pieces as the year went on. But I think just as a general verbalized uh, uh, moment with Liam back at the pizza party, um, I I knew I knew the fate. I knew the fate of our of our heroes um, and where and where the storyline goes and some of the details along the way but uh but yeah it was just kind of general it's kind of like yeah here's here's your character and these these guys are the uh it appears as the what's his name uh sam gamgee to uh chris redfield's frodo and you guys are gonna <laughs> yeah. you guys are gonna march into mordor and uh you know at the end there's gonna be great sacrifice and um you know and and, and like I, I had a general outline going in okay but I really didn't know. I, I remember I remember uh, recording some of the very very final scenes. I didn't know to what extent. I didn't I didn't know uh, to like what extent Piers would be just completely you know mutilated beyond all recognition and yeah. and all that stuff. Like I knew I knew he was going to take a bullet for for Chris, but um, uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't I didn't know how uh, that was going to play out in detail until we actually did it. Okay. And uh, were you are you surprised that even though Piers is a one-off character, but how loved he is by the fans, like how important he's become to the series as far as um, the reception and everything? I want to know where these guys buy these masks. Is there a <laughs> right? sale on? Was there a sale on Mexican wrestler masks? Um, <laughs> <Lucha masks. laughs> Uh, so, so, sorry, uh, what, what was the question? Repeat the question. Are you surprised by um, the, the amount of support and love that Piers has gotten from the, uh, from the fans? Yeah, I love it. I love that uh, he was embraced as he was, you know? I, I went into the job just going, my, jo my job is to support uh, the Chris Redfield character. And, and that, that's, that's my, my job. I, I would make the Sam Gamgee joke a lot. <laughs> but it's true. But it's true. He's he's that character, right? He's, he he's really the best is, yeah. friend character, and so I never I never really imagined. Um, I, yeah, I didn't think forward like after the game necessarily how he would be received. I just knew that that's what I wanted to bring to it, and it was very very cool as the game came out and people did contact me or, uh, uh, yeah, send everything from like actual tangible fan letters to just on Twitter and people saying how much they really just love the campaign and the storyline and where it goes and specifically they're really enjoying peers as a, as a as a strong character um which i which i thought was great i thought that was just so cool i was so grateful and happy um that that uh, that all that work for that year uh, yeah. came across came across in, a, in an affecting way um uh, as was being expressed to me i i thought that, I thought that was very awesome i felt very great uh, so much gratitude for that you know, it's it's interesting too. There's something refreshing about Piers in this series, because uh, we've seen you know the main characters for so long have come through. Uh, it's gotten to the point in the series where they were just basically kicking ass all the time. Um, there wasn't a whole lot. Okay, this guy's just gonna stand here and wait for me to. This <laughs> <laughs> is like uh, he's just hanging out. Feel bad now. Oh, I should have shot him. <laughs> what did you? What did? 
What did you think was gonna happen? <laughs> he was being so polite about it too. He's waiting. Uh, <laughs> no, now that I gotta pull it up my head, now I'm gonna try. Now I'm gonna try really hard. Uh, there's something refreshing about like it's not so much innocence, but I think we should go to this restaurant. Wait, did you see that poster on the wall? Thirteen dollar dim sum or something on there. Oh yeah, let's take a look. Thirteen. There we go. There we Since go. Uh, 1980. Yeah, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's, he's been doing it for a while. He's the most human. What'd you say? I said it's because Piers is literally the most human character we've yeah, had since Claire Redfield. It's been years. Relatable. Oh, okay. Uh, I get that. Like, he's not Superman. He's just a normal, you know. Yeah, he's not Chris Redfield. That's the thing. Exactly. <laughs> I still think they made the wrong choice. They should have killed off Chris. <laughs> I could have seen uh, Piers taking on a more yep. leading role. You know, I mean, whether you killed Chris or not, and I, maybe sometimes we'll get lucky and... And, I just um, body slam that bastard. <laughs> maybe Pierce will come back in some form or fashion, but that would be nice. Yeah, that's actually what <laughs> are the, I are want the NPCs beating themselves up. Pretty much. What is that? <laughs> NPC fight. NPC fight. <laughs> I would attempt to basically kill off Chris to breathe a little more fresh air into the series. I could have seen Pierce taking over his role. Yeah. He was a good addition. I liked I, him. I, I would have been fine with that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no offense, Roger Greg Smith, um, but uh, but yeah, no. I so so far my write-in campaigns uh, have not uh, had an effect on Capcom's decision to uh, to revive Piers yet. Please bring um, me back. <laughs> yeah, I'm like Tim Robbins in the Shawshank Redemption. I write a letter every single day, trying to get Capcom to. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So, somebody in the chat room is like, did he just make a Shawshank Redemption yeah, reference? Right. On <laughs> exactly. Oh, hi. Yeah. These things are weird. Oh. <laughs> Ow. Slippery. Yeah, there's like little bugs. They take off with people. Yeah. There are a lot of mops around here. There people really have was. just left. There are a lot of, is this a broom a manufacturer? Mop? It was just a really clean place. What are they selling here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this guy's on the ceiling. It's re yeah, it's really great, hey, brother. Hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wait, Ollie, I got this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Chris was gonna make him captain anyway. Nobody had to die. <laughs> oh! This is true. I mean, you're the one who brought Chris out of the, uh, out of the bottle. <laughs> I didn't that, realize that was right there. Yeah, I didn't realize there was a, a uh, cover system in this game. I forgot. It's been so long since I played it. Where do you think you're going, buddy? Oh, what was that? What blew up? Grenade. Oh, thank you. You let me free with grenades. <laughs> Ooh, I, I realize. I realize it, free, it, it really frees me up not playing because usually I'm, you know, I'm I'm used to playing, but yeah. just watching you guys, I'm so distracted by details in the background, and I'm. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, you're able to see things like the damn $15 yeah. dip sum. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> I want to call that guy. I'm hungry now. <laughs> Chinese food. And, and I have some weird compulsion to want to clean my room. <laughs> mop it? With a broom. I'm going to go mop the carpet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where'd he go? He disappeared. He's over here somewhere. Ow, ow. Our NPCs oh. are so useless oh. in this game. Oh, they are. I might accidentally shoot the, the hostage. Slippery little bastard. Really now you know how get him. Get him. He he gets ah. Ow. Come on. All right, this is it. This is the moment. Uh, yes. Oh, yay. We did it. That's not who saved him. Pierce saved him. <laughs> <laughs> His game is full of lies. <laughs> so how long did it take you to get to playing it after the game was done and released? Uh, let's see. How long was it? It was very, very close. Um, the Capcom didn't let out any early copies, so oh, I didn't. I didn't get an official copy until the day of public release. That was when I actually had a copy in my hand. I did get to play uh, some demos, though, some samples that were available at uh, do, do, what's that? E3. E3 at E3 yeah. in LA. Capcom had a gigantic booth that year, and this was the banner title that they were pushing. Yeah. And so they had a whole kind of secret little room there to to play some samples of it. And that was the very, very first time that I saw finished, finished gameplay and got to touch it, taste it, 
play with it and you know, the video game i mean the video game yeah. but, um, and uh, and yeah it was very cool it was it was it was a cool moment because uh, i had done smaller characters in video games here and then but at this time at the, at this moment this was um, my first big real like lead playable character mm-hmm. and and i had the, i had this awesome moment i had this like little the you know giddy 6 year old video gamer um, <laughs> inside me was very happy to watch other uh, there was like there was like I would say he's probably about I don't know about ten or ten eleven years old or so in the Capcom booth playing the Pierce character and I'm oh, just nice. like watching this kid play my character I'm like whoa if I told myself like back when I was like six playing video games that I was actually going to be in a video game that I would actually be like the voice and character in a video game my my mind would have been blown yeah be like yep I can't imagine what that's like to be. Like I said, at E3, which is huge, which I want to ask yeah. about that in a minute because I want to know what that was like for you. But to be there watching a kid, you know, uh, thinking back to when you were a kid, you know, playing video games or getting into the, the whole thing of, you know, defining your heroes in life, basically. And here's a oh, kid yeah. in front of a, a game system playing a character that you helped create. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The, for what? What you, oh. <laughs> the, the gamer became the game. Yeah. <laughs> and what was yeah, E3 it, like? It, it, had had you been to anything like that before? E3 is amazing. Yeah, I've been to E3 uh, before in the past. Before that, um, uh, that it, uh, it's it's just a huge, gigantic wonderland of future video game titles, banner titles being released, all kinds of stuff to play with, um, and uh, yes, yeah, spe- release it, getting to see the trailers first at E3 that released there um, is is super fun and. Just uh, and one of my favorite parts <clears throat> is there. There's always this uh, uh, big corner of the convention that's dedicated to the video game museum. So you got all the classic stuff. You got like uh, old Ataris and Commodore systems and uh, original Game Boys and uh, the Sega Game Gear and like uh, and, and even stuff that goes you know way 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 before I think any of our time. Um, I, I, I love the history of it because you, you're at that table with the museum of all the classic vintage stuff that goes way way back and then you turn around and you're looking at like the new Assassin's Creed or um, or just, just where, where the technology has gone VR Oculus had a huge booth that year yeah and so you look at this like crappy little Atari controller from the 70s then you turn around and there's an Oculus Rift staring yeah, at you know, VR and, yeah and you're like wow I live in the future you know <laughs> The mix of the old and the new. <laughs> Man, it's an awesome event. So you got your copy. Uh, did they give you a copy or did you have to go buy it? Uh, I actually had to go buy it. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. They, they, yeah, they, gave it, they, they didn't give out anything. They didn't get a copy. <laughs> uh, amazing, wonderful people. I have nothing bad to say about them, right. but I had to go buy it. Still writing thing. your letters. <laughs> yeah, I'm still writing my letters, though. Some, someday, the Chronicles of Piers Nivens. Yeah, the return. return of the Prodigal Son. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's the revenge. The revenge. <laughs> uh, so you got your copy. Yeah, you went out and bought it. The bad guy, and he goes after Chris. You left me there. You right. Know. I think it's a new Albert me. Wesker. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. You know. We need a new one. I was gonna. I was gonna say Joker. It's like Chris Redfield dropped me in a vat of acid. But, you know. <laughs> Did you play any of the other Resident Evils before you got into this one? Uh, I played all the way through five, start oh. to finish, um, okay. and Man. and then before that, I. Uh, I think the last one that I really played was back. What was it on the Dreamcast? Mm-hmm. It was like was, Code Veronica. Was, yeah. was two. Wait, really? Was or maybe I might be mixing it up. Whatever, whatever was on whatever was on Dreamcast. I remember playing that. Dreamcast was that? It was it was it Code Veronica? That was two, three, and Code Veronica. They ported it two of them, and then Code Veronica was on there from the start. Yeah. Okay. So two was okay. So I think it was two. Huh. I think it was two. And then, but yeah, and then uh, not until five. And you played through five. And then, so you, you got your hands on the copy of your game and you played through. You We were talking earlier for everybody who was uh, tuning in. We, we were talking a little bit before this. You played through only your campaign. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, as a narcissistic, uh, <laughs> egotistical fool, um, I very charitably played through only my campaign. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> And again, well, yeah. I don't blame yeah. you. It's it, the other one seemed cool, you know, it seemed fun. Yeah. You're I, not I, missing I, anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it for you. 
what were your uh, reactions when you were playing it? Like thoughts as far as how it turned out? And... What? Oh, I think I, I got shot. intense. Sorry, I got yeah, I got yeah, lost I got... in the action there. I got <laughs> I got I got pulled in. Um, I hope they make it. Um, do do do. How did I feel playing it? Yeah. I um. A little bit of that E3 feeling came back, going like, "Wow, I'm playing this character, and it's me." Yeah. Um, and uh, especially in the cutscenes like this. Oh, Shit. that always happens. I know. We we're not going that way. <laughs> I don't know. It usually happens when we're playing. <laughs> yeah. I was very helpful there. Did you hear? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do we do now? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's usually the advice I give Ollie when he's streaming. Yeah. <laughs> like the what do I do? That thing. <laughs> Stuff. Stuff with the you know the thing about Bobby and you know. Alpha team, get out of there now. Are you still in the building with me, AJ? Yes. Okay. I was you lost. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> was there any uh, playing it and seeing it and hearing it? Was there anything that going back and be like, man, I wish I'd done this line differently or I didn't like the way that one came out <laughs> um let me think no I, I was pretty happy with it because I mean, we did so much and Liam again yeah, going back director, to because yeah. it, it yeah it really takes a director I mean I keep going back to Liam not just to to kiss his ass he definitely doesn't need anybody to kiss his ass he's just he, he just is a badass director and so he gets he gets it out of you, you know. He gets the performance that's needed, and you do so much, and you do it different ways, and and there's and um, it's such a str oh that <laughs> I don't think it. that was supposed to happen. <laughs> no, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I like I I really feel with this. It, it was all left on the table. I don't have anything where I look at it and go, oh really, really? That's what they went with? That's yeah. what I said? I could have done that better. Do you have any input on any of the um, the dialogue at all? Yeah, sometimes. Um, if something like wasn't clicking, or if it just felt like, if it if um, yeah, if it just kind of felt awkward, or because sometimes that can happen. Like sometimes on paper, the line could look really good, or you don't realize that humans don't talk that way. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, like and and so it's like you know. Maybe you should get down on the floor before something bad happens, you know, and it and it sounds like really robotic or yeah, something, yeah. you know, and so you just kind of change it up, maybe throw in some contractions, throw out a word or, um, you know, just kind of dirty it up, dirty up the line a little bit so it sounds more more human and less robot. Yeah, more natural. So that happens. Yeah, that happens a bit. Um, oh, that's like the scene from Die Hard 3. <laughs> yeah, um, where they jump off the ship. Where they jump off the boat. Yeah. I kind of uh, feel bad for you. I'm just now realizing how much screaming is in this game. Yeah, yeah. scream a lot. <laughs> oh yeah. Bad no, I would. I I would literally get done sometimes, just unable to speak at all. Like I, I, I would just, I would want to hold flashcards for people just saying I cannot speak today. <laughs> Video I was gonna say when we talked to. Uh, Linda Ballantyne, she was saying they had her screaming so much that it got to the point where she had to literally save all the screaming for the end of the day, or she would have no voice. Yeah, for the, for the oh, yeah. Definitely. Ideally. Oh, here comes flashback. Mm -hmm. Pivotal moment. Nice shot of Adam with the face modeling there. <laughs> yep. Funny how they all get cocooned in the same exact way. <laughs> <laughs> all, all reaching toward Chris. Uh, His fault. With that, with that guilt trip expression on their face. <laughs> um, do, do, do yeah, the screaming, the screaming. Um, you definitely feel it, and you definitely want to save it for the end of the day. Okay. And uh, and uh, it, co it comes back to good direction as well, because that's that's not necessarily something that the studio or the production in general like the the engineer and stuff like that. it's not really their job to look out for that uh -huh. and so and so that again comes to the director is going to get a bunch of pages going like this is what needs to be recorded today and they're not necessarily in in like ascending order from whisper to guttural screaming mm -hmm. and and uh it, it's again the territory of a good director to know that uh, that needs to be 
rearranged right and, and make it the easiest and best day for for his actors so they don't fry they don't vocal fry like right. at the very beginning of the session when you've got three hours left right to protect the the actors and not knowing that i mean it could probably because i can imagine going and doing all the screaming intensive parts in the beginning not only is your voice shot but you could do a lot of damage having to continue working throughout the day with that oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah definitely how do you uh, manage your voice when you're in, you know, in a role like that where you're having to stress it and and put it to where it's pretty much going to hurt it? <laughs> Massive amounts of Vicodin. Vicodin. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> gargling, gargling with opium. Um, I, don't, I don't even know that's a thing. That sounds like something. That sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, no, just uh, so there's plenty of tea available just outside the studio um, in the production house there, and they'll definitely you you definitely want lots of tea and lots of honey. Okay, um, that and really, honey. yeah, and really just not uh, just not talk. You know, once it, it, don't talk any more than you have to, especially as you start getting into the really heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, just don't waste it. And um, uh, oh, this was actually the very first cutscene that I saw. I just realized looking at it. This was the very, very, very first completed cutscene. Oh, cool. That that I saw, yeah. Oh, is that me? Says speaker's muted? No, it, it's quiet, it looks like. Listen up. Oh, there we go. Yeah, oh, your no. speaker's muted, yeah. I, there we go. Yeah, I can hear it, yeah. The only way we're gonna do that is um, together. Nobody's yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm half watching the scene because I remember that this was the very first cutscene that I saw, and I was like, oh, this is, this is coming together. This is so cool. Yeah, it looks awesome. <laughs> it's actually becoming a story. It's actually yeah. going to, it's actually, you know, taking shape. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, just not talking. Just not talking when you're, when you're done with the sessions and let it heal. Yeah, let it heal. Yeah, it'd be very rare that you had uh, two days back to back, and that was on purpose with the schedule. Yeah. Even if they even if they needed recordings uh, in close proximity to each other, you'd you'd have a day. Okay. Uh, so they gave you a but, chance to heal and rest. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and it's it's rough. It's it's no joke. It's it's some serious hardcore. It's it's probably the it's probably the hardest uh, the heaviest lifting as a voice actor in terms of what is asked of you physically. I know some voice artists that just they don't they don't dig it they don't they they're like you know what it's just not for me um, blowing out my voice like that and and going through all that and there's some voice actors that really prefer not to do this kind of work because it is it's heavy duty and I I totally get it yeah um, you know it's it's serious business yeah yeah that's probably uh, as far as voice acting goes probably the most physical most dangerous parts to do because of that stress. Yeah, there's not a lot of audio books out there that are like, you know. Yeah, screaming. <laughs> Captain! Not a lot of commercials yeah. either. <laughs> you ready to play some Call of Duty? I know, it's, it's going to be a little bit different here. <laughs> Hear that? Yeah. It's me earning my acting stripes right there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Getting paid. Yeah. Right, I need to snipe this guy. Or not. <laughs> Reload, apparently. Bring in the sniper mode. There you go. Oh no, I didn't get him. A lot of, uh... There's a zoom. Okay, let's try that. How about we do that? You know? Right stick. Oh, push it down. Come on, get him, get him. There we go, got him. <laughs> You're making me look bad here, Took you guys. Me a Come on. Work there. Here's, all like here's the PSA expert sniper. We can't miss. There's no missing in baseball. Come on. Yeah. He, uh, he needs to take some drama meat or something. He's moves too much. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> He's a little stressed out. It's probably because I'm getting shot at the same time. <laughs> That's no excuse. No, not at all. Oh, man. <laughs> I got wasted. Uh, that knocked me down. War, war is stressful when you're being shot at. It's a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The oh, cool. uh, I just noticed the boxes of ammo kind of look like uh, Wonka bars, kind of look like Wonka, Wonka chocolate bars. bars. <laughs> yeah, that we're collecting. You know? Is that? Oh, I, I shot his head off. And face. <laughs> oh, I no. shot his face off. I, I thought that was it. I thought he was going down. There I know. We go. He took that like a champ. <laughs> yeah. He took he, he took it like he got a mosquito bite on the back of his neck at first. <laughs> oh, this guy is like, wearing like, the was... Ada the Ada winter collection <laughs> casual wear. Right? That was the that was the Ada hoodie available in stores near you. Yeah, now she's got the uh, super secret spy look. 
Have you yeah. seen anything for the um, for the series since this? Have you uh, kept up with it at all? Like anything um, as far as Resident Evil Seven or Resident Evil Two Remake? No, I haven't. I haven't oh, okay. really. I have, I have no idea what's in the loop. Yeah, Ada's uh, back, obviously, since it's a remake of the second one where she was introduced, and she has this, uh, like, khaki spy jacket and sunglasses on at night, so obviously she's suspicious. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, hopefully she takes those off at some point. I'm like, you, come on. It's a dark, rainy night, and you got sunglasses on. You're not seeing anything. <laughs> <laughs> don't try and tell me that that was, like, a... Uh, a heads-up display or some kind of secret spy stuff back then. <laughs> that was 1998. <laughs> Ada. Ada always comes back. <laughs> Ada's, 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 Ada's like the honey badger. Shouldn't give a shit. You don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, here comes the giant monster. Oh, oh. The troll. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. He just wants a hug. <laughs> <laughs> or a lower jaw. That's you. <laughs> the ability to eat, so, to be able to drink soup. He has no chin either. Car, car. Oh, oh. I think when you wear your heart on your back, though, you're just asking for it. Yeah, that's kind of a bad place. Yeah. I think Darwin was wrong. <laughs> Are we supposed to kill him? I mean, what's the plan? Uh, he is way too close for comfort. Yeah. Oh, okay, I was there. like, I don't think we're actually going to kill him. <laughs> oh boy. And for everybody watching, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, we are with live with Christopher Emerson, the voice of Piers Nevins. Nivens or Nevins? How do they explain it to you? Nivens. Nivens, okay. Piers Nevins. Hold out for the armored vehicles. Is there no big guns? I thought there was a a way to get up, like to a mounted gun or something around here. I mean, I just got him. I think. Oh, nope. Sniper rifle gonna be better. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Get it. Rip it out. Rip it out, Chris. <laughs> Hammer those buttons! <laughs> wiggle them. Ha sticks. Hammer the buttons. Hammer the buttons and wiggle the sticks. <laughs> Hammer the buttons. Hammer the buttons and wiggle the sticks. <laughs> I do things. <laughs> Colin, thank you for the bits. But we are taking money for that, so... Uh, who was the post of the link a minute ago? Zombie, can you post uh, that again, zombie. please? For the yes, Extra Life? Yes, raising funds for Extra Life. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions for Christopher Emerson, uh, let us know. I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat at the same time. You can put them in there. If I spot it, uh, we'll make sure we'll ask him. Ask away. Anything and everything. Resident Evil and beyond. <laughs> I'm an open book. Careful what you ask for. Be <laughs> careful what you ask for. <laughs> yeah, it'd be cool to see Pierce come back. Maybe in a prequel. This guy is obviously knows what he's doing. He's shooting the ground. They're all over. Right? <laughs> okay. It'd be nice to see Pierce come back in a prequel game or maybe one of the side missions or side games or something. Maybe he baby could be Pierce. the... Baby Pierce and baby Chris. Right. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> he you could know? be the voice in Chris's head that haunts him. <laughs> BSA babies, they make our dreams come true. <laughs> was, that, was that the uh, Muppet Babies? <laughs> there, it was an attempt at the Muppet Babies. <laughs> Muppet Babies. Well, this guy's stuck in a dying uh, motion. Oh, there he goes. He fell. Oh. He was dying for five minutes. He had a hairball. He was heaving. <laughs> he had a long night. Yeah. Ozma has a good point. It'd be nice to see, like, uh, in Revelations 3, maybe it's a prequel or something and Pierce comes back. I just don't really think he's dead yet. I think there's possibility. Be yeah, I think, the, I think there's prequel possibility for sure. I mean, they hint at so much, like, backstory and the relationship between yeah. Pier Chris and Pierce and coming up together and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think I think a prequel yeah. would be pretty bad. That would be cool, yeah. Also, yeah. Uh, Mental Mayhem says a good team up would be Rebecca and Pierce. That would be cool. They're the only young. problem with Capcom is, though, though they don't bring the old voices back anymore. Mm, yeah. They even got yeah. rid of the uh, Roger Craig Smith with Chris. Yeah, they casted a new Chris uh, Redfield voice, David Vaughn. He did a great job. 
Um, but that's kind of how things are going with them right now. They're what is it, non-union? Yeah, the, there was the the strike that happened, which I'm curious to, to hear your, your thoughts on that if that affected you. Um, but they're really they're looking for non-union actors right now. Yeah, it's. Uh... Uh, yeah, I, I mean, some some people feel very passionately about the politics of all of it. Um, I I can't say that I'm really informed enough to to uh, admit to having any sort of uh, opinion that's worth listening to, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, honestly. But you know, I I, I support the union, and uh, you know, unions are good in general. And I, and I I think I think there's a back and forth in the industry in terms of what. Um, uh, what what the performers are really worth in terms of their value toward a project, right? And 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 what they deserve to be paid or how they sh should uh, be compensated, and I think I think eventually I think eventually there'll probably be a, a model uh, that'll be uh, totally unsatisfactory to both sides, which means it'll be perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, I, th I think it'd be, I think it's 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 fair on on both sides to want that. And hey, if Capcom goes non-union, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to really really dislike that as a union member. But I, I don't know. It's I, both both sides need to work out their stuff. You know, so. and we've heard that too. There's uh, a lot of people are were obviously supportive of the union side and and the you know better pay and. Um, you know benefits and everything taking care of the actors because of the stress that the voice actors put their voices through but um talking to the different actors they understand it's a business you know yeah and, and there's not much you can do about that sure yeah and I, and I think what they're looking for is something along the lines of old school stuff with movies and tv that have uh like residual payments and, uh -huh. and and all that and you know i think there's some fairness to that these games make hundreds of millions of dollars you know like they they, they, they make so much the box office of video games it eclipsed the movie industry a very long time ago yeah um, oh, to you know, be fair resident evil 6 almost took resident evil under but yeah, almost it was, what sorry it was a very successful yeah. game form as far as making money but there was a lot of backlash because of the direction the series was going with being more action oriented Instead of um, core related, you know, with the roots of it. Oh sure, yeah. But, yeah and I and I just mean, it. yeah. No, no, I totally get you. And then that definitely starts to be, you know, the the uh, artistic vision or execution of it versus the money business side of it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I just mean in terms of you know Capcom as a production company and then their dealings with contract stuff with unions. I think, I think, I think when it comes to all that stuff, um, I think it's. I, th I think it's fair for the union to want more for their performers yeah, and exactly. protect them in terms of how this content is used. And, you right. know, so, but there's that. Yeah, that's that's and that's the truth of it too. It's about protecting them and, and making sure that they're treated fairly with what they're getting in return. Because there was a lot of uh, you know in Resident Evil 2 talking with um, Alice and Court and and Paul Haddad, they didn't get paid really anything, and there was no residuals no. after the fact. Uh, the game's yeah. been out for over 20 years, and they're still making money off of it, but they haven't received anything outside of what their initial pay was. Mm, their their gotcha, callback, their gotcha. ADR, uh, when they got called back to do some uh, re-recordings. And it's crazy that sure. that's how it was going back then. I'm glad now that the um, you know, the industry has, has gotten past the strike, and the actors will start getting taken care of better. How much longer, Finn? How, how much longer? longer? <laughs> Hurry up, Finn. <laughs> I'm tired of trying to scope these dudes. <laughs> One thing I definitely don't like about the sniping mechanic is pulling out to reload every time. Yeah. And that's oh. what she said. <laughs> I had to put that in there. <laughs> you, just ki you just killed my Marco. I know. I killed my Marco. Uh, not my Marco! <laughs> <laughs> Air she blows. Blood on the camera. It's like we're there. These guys are so awful. They're just putting their their guns over the bags and shooting randomly. <laughs> Not even shooting in the direction of the person. Is there a crouch button? I don't even know. Uh, you gotta get up close to something. You push A and they crouch down below it. Oh, okay. Or X. They're done with the bomb, Ollie. Oh, okay. We can leave? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Mm -hmm. Yara, she blows. I'm looking. Let's see. So, 
Would Claire and Pierce hitch it off, and what Resident Evil would you like to see get hitched? Oh, so you, are we talking about um, romances, relationships, mental mayhem? I guess that's the question. What any kind of relationships, like characters you'd like to see shipped, Christopher? The, yeah. <laughs> um, Pierce <let> <laughs> and life, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Pierce and being alive. <laughs> yeah. Pierce <laughs> and breathing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pierce <laughs> and dry land. <laughs> um, um, who I think. Uh, I think Finn and Ada. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Finn, I think Finn got the short end of the stick there, so, you yeah, know. Yeah, kind of did. <laughs> um, but uh, any relationships that I would like to see? It's an interesting question going through. It's, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like, it's like the loving version of uh, which superhero do you think can kick whose superhero's ass, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, oh. Huh. Got lost in the action again. I didn't know if I was going to make it. Um, <laughs> That's close. Where are you going? Why are you going that way? Oh, I got to cover you, don't I? Yes, you do. I've never done Better get good, before. Ollie. Where, where, where do I go? Oh. What was that? Was that a bad guy? No, that was my guy. Okay. Oh. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. Make it some progress. That was a cool barrel roll he did. There we go. Okay. <laughs> He's just gonna punch him and... I thought he was gonna finish him. All he needs to get good. Zombie, I haven't even started yet. <laughs> Alright, so... I'm gonna, I'm gonna be so, uh, so I got lost in the action, but I'm gonna be uh, only, if, only if Courtney Taylor can come back as uh, the voice of Ada. Yeah. Uh, then I would, if that can happen, and I can come back as Piers, then I'd say Piers and Ada, just so, <laughs> just so, just so I get to act with Courtney because she's amazing and awesome, and I, and I'm such a super fan of hers, both in, See, both in life and professionally. She's just a cool girl. <laughs> So, so, uh, so if it means more acting with Courtney, then I, I say Piers and Ada. Oh, nice. You draw the take out of position. I can take care of that truck. Yeah, we actually uh, are interviewing uh, Courtney as well. Oh yeah? Yeah. Uh, we were supposed tell, to do tell her this. hello for me. Oh, I will. I will. We were supposed to interview her uh, Sunday, but there was a disconnect with us in Skype, so we're pushing it back. She's uh, traveling right now, but we should be uh, linking that up again real soon. What are we doing here, AJ? Uh, you have to wait till I draw the tank out, and then you gotta look for a red barrel to shoot. Red barrel. Uh, that's not a red barrel, that's a red door. <laughs> and there's also more people, so if you could snipe them, that'd be great. I'm, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. He shakes a lot. <laughs> like, a lot, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, calm down, dude. <laughs> it's all that bike in. I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I got two for one on that one. All right, where's See, that now we know green herbs are actually Vicodin. <laughs> <laughs> that one? Wow, that's it. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> you said red barrel. That was a red tanker. <laughs> am I supposed to leave now? What am I supposed to do here? Yeah. What do I do? Jump. Where, where do I go? Me. No, this way. Okay. Cool. Did you uh, play yeah. this with anybody? Or did you play it solo? Christopher? Um, do, do, do I played it solo at first, and then through um, through Xbox Live, started playing some uh, with with friends, and also I had done some interviews at the time uh, oh, cool. when the first when the game first came out. So like at the launch party and on uh, uh, like some some red carpet interviews for the for other video game stuff. There's a big video game event. Like um, I don't even know what to call it. It was a fundraiser. It was a fundraiser for causes. And it was like play for a cause or something, and it was okay. Uh, and so at those two events, or at, at the launch party, and at that event, I had uh, said publicly what my Xbox Live uh, name was. Uh -oh. <laughs> and so, I, and so I started getting a lot. I started getting when the game came. I started getting so many uh, connections, right? So I started getting yeah. so many gamers, uh, gamer friends, and so uh, yeah, met some cool people and played co-op. Nice. So that so it was a good thing to put your name out there. 
Yeah, I was fine with it. Yeah. Could have wound up dead, but it worked out. Is he dead? No, I even <laughs> oh. shot the top of his head off, and he's still okay. <laughs> but an elbow, an elbow will do the job. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm here. Oh, hi. Finally made it. How's it going? Uh, Whisker, Wesker hinted at they'd be... If Steve has survived, that'd be one oof if he lived. Wesker hinted. Wesker hinted at what? I'm looking at the chat here. Uh, let me know we can do some mercs. If people have this on PC, let Arkin know. He will be back. Are you a fan of the movies at all? Um, I haven't seen like any of them, I think. I saw, that's not true. I saw, what's the one where the very, I think it was, Maybe it was the last one or the second before where the whole thing is like in slow motion reverse on the ship at the very beginning. Uh, uh, what was that? Afterlife? Maybe. Yeah, I think it was Afterlife. Um, I, I saw that. I saw that one, but I didn't. I didn't see any of the other ones. Or maybe the one. I saw pieces of the one that takes place in like a post-apocalyptic Vegas, right? Extinction. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, like uh, Ozma says in the chat, don't do it. Save yourself. <laughs> don't watch the movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, they're very different, right? They're like completely, you know, they're 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 two different uh, animals entirely. Yeah, they are. But um, you know, most. Oh, I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you an awesome story though. I have I I haven't uh, uh, put this out into the ether at all. I just kind of told some friends that it happened, oh, but. Cool. Um, that uh so literally like the day of the launch the public launch of six being out there mm -hmm. um i i was uh just like a few blocks from where i am now at this uh, little shopping center in la and um and i'm shopping and I, and I look over like across the way and i'm like wait is that no that can't be i totally think it is and it was Mila Jovovich <laughs> just standing like on the like with her kid and they were shopping and the, and the, and the I'm like this is too weird I mean I'm literally like like my the game just came out and I've been doing all this work and stuff and and there's Mila Jovovich and and I'm like and I'm like well I have to go over and say hello this is, I mean it's just too easy to start a conversation so so I went over and I said hi I, you totally don't know uh, who I am but um, I just wrapped a year of working on Resident Evil 6 the video game and of course you know you 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 are Resident Evil universe of, of movies yeah. and stuff and she's like oh that's so cool so like what's the, what's the story and stuff and we like chatted about the story a little bit and what characters are there she actually she actually knew a couple of people associated in the video game world just as oh, okay. kind of like friends but I mean she's her world is very removed from all everything right, video right. game but uh, but yeah the the like day of the launch I'm just hanging out and bumped into Mila Jovovich. <laughs> um, and she was super cool. She was just super chill and wanted and, and talked about it. She thought it was funny that uh, yeah the connection of Resident Evil and it's like all right cool so yeah. you know, great bump in India and take care. Like I see your weird nice weird <laughs> yeah weird little uh, universe alignment there. It really is yeah. I'm in Resident Evil too. How about that? <laughs> I'll get started planning the That's pretty awesome though. That's just random. All right, make it quick. Yeah, crazy random. Yeah, we're uh, we're not the biggest fans of the game or the movies, but um, like I like Mila, and, and they're, like they had said in the chat, yeah, Mila, I don't blame her for the movies. <laughs> but there's I'll uh, say no comment. Yeah, there's a big difference between why we like the games too. And the thing is too, sure. is they kind of like are we supposed to run yet? Yeah. Um, the games and the movies started to kind of mirror so like each other with with the action oriented. And, focus on that as opposed to the horror part mm, yeah uh, but you know with Resident Evil 7 came out in um, January 2016 it's it's gotten back to uh, 2016 or 17 17 Captain, we've got a gun in black. it's kind of gotten back to um, the horror really good but it was a different aspect they did it in first person so it was really different from what people were used to but it was a decent horror game yeah, it looked pretty good. I, I didn't play it, but just kind of checking out some of the online content yeah. uh, and uh, the trailers and stuff, and just seeing that it was, yeah, like you said, it was a totally different direction. It seemed um, more horror, less action. It seemed cool. 
Yeah, yeah. Did you did you play it in VR? Yeah, we actually just played it a few weeks ago. For my first time, I played it in VR, uh, and it was good. It was really good. It made me sick here and there, but as far as like the overall, I was pretty impressed with it. It was cool to be in the world and be able to actually like. I was I was actually one of my most exciting moments of that was being able to lean physically and look around corners to peek around corners. I was just so impressed by sure. that. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. And I spent a lot of time when I first put it in in VR, just looking at stuff, getting out close to the wall and looking at the details, and it was pretty cool. It was very well done. So was it was it your first time in VR? Was I've, the game? I've done some other VR games, uh, but the first time I've done something that was that well i guess done i haven't really gone into a whole lot of gotcha. vr but this was you know made for vr so right it was really a neat experience gotcha very very cool yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm a big vr fan i like vr so much it's yeah it's, it's really awesome it's it's growing too what i like is they're starting to like playstation has a big focus on it now for next year there's a lot of games coming out for vr so i'm hoping that it takes off and then you know it keeps improving because right now I, I still get nauseous because there's it's still fuzzy to me. It's still blurry, and it, it makes me a little upset. But uh, once it's a crystal clear picture, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's so much potential and so many cool things that are out there in different formats. You know, yeah. uh, there's. Yeah. It's not just all, uh, say, kind of port. It's it's not all just porting games that we know or formats that we know into VR, which there's plenty of, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But but also taking this brand new format and doing things that you could never do before. Yeah. Um, and the stories that you can tell with full immersion. Yeah. Um, and involving the point of view of the player in a in a way that is very very different and much more intimate than when the gamer is or when the point of view is being experienced through a screen. Um, yeah. And uh, you know instead of you know 360 immersion. Right. Uh, I'm uh, yeah. I'm I'm a big fan. I'm such a big fan. I created a small company for a little while, and it took me to Montreal, and we had funding, and did a tech startup because of virtual reality and my love for it. Oh, cool. Nice. So, yeah. Um, uh, what I like too is the is the possibility of like going um, like live events, like concerts or or games or boxing, UFC matches, wrestling sure. events, all these things that you are you know can experience live. But if you can't make it, they have this starting to play with that idea of uh, being able to watch it in VR, where it's like your ringside, basically. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's really cool. Just being look around. There's an audience around you. You're watching the fight in front of you or whatever's going on. Uh, it's, it's really neat. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm out of ammo, by the way. I'm not. Oh, I took two for one. Nice. That works. That'll save me a little bit. <laughs> AJ. Hey, how about you stop hogging all that ammo there, AJ? <laughs> you can't handle the ammo. You can't handle the ammo. <laughs> Don't you tell me how to live my life. <laughs> I do every day, though. Uh, wiggle the six. Wiggle the six. Wiggle the six. <laughs> Osma says, hey, I honestly saw someone play RE7 VR and it kind of looked weird. Hands and subtitles. Yeah. It is weird that... uh. In, in Resident Evil 7 VR, you're disconnected from your body, like, your character only has hands. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. So you're sitting there um, playing this game, and when you look at your character's hands, and not, not only that, you can't use the move controllers, you can only use um, um, the remote, the regular game controller. Right. But when they do cutscenes and things are happening, and your character only lifts his hands up, and there's no body, it's just a pair of... You know, bodiless hands floating. <laughs> it's weird. It's a little weird. <laughs> that guy did like a slow motion fade away. Like it was like, boom! Uh, like oh, limbo. Shot me. Yeah. I guess I'll just fade off. <laughs> Do an epic spin. Put your hand down. Oh, oh. Kicked him off. <laughs> Am I just supposed to protect this dude the whole time? I don't remember. Yep. Okay. I thought I'd get to shoot the gun. <laughs> yeah, we got uh -oh. seven seconds. Five seconds. All right, did I kill him? Yes. Yes. Oh, man, I thought I was going to Spartan kick him. <laughs> yeah, I killed him. Was there a sniper up here the whole time? No. Okay. Is that it? All right. Move it on. Yeah, I killed the big guy, so. Can I not jump off this cool red thing? What's that there for? Apparently not. 
I guess we're moving on. Yep, if you push L1 and I'll tell you where to go. Oh, okay. Well, that's just cheating. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Christopher, you got any uh, other big things coming up you're working on? Anything you can talk about? Um, let's see. What's going on? So, I've been back in L.A. for a little bit. Um, I've been traveling around a whole lot and being more, more of a remote voiceover artist, which means uh, that I have not been doing like animation and interactive stuff because uh -huh. that requires more being in, in town. In booth, studio, so, so yeah, I, yeah, I just got back to L.A. from being out of L.A. for about three years. And so, so we'll see. We'll see while well, here, uh, meeting with some people, and seeing what shakes uh, while in town, but leaving again and soon. Okay. So for for the for the foreseeable future, until uh, until otherwise noted, it's more mostly uh, uh, radio campaigns and uh, television commercial stuff, TV promo. So okay. I did some TV promos for uh, the new show Fox, uh, or uh, the new show Fox, the new show on Fox, nine one one. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of that with Jennifer Love, uh, Hewitt, and uh, yeah. lot, some of the other cast. I, I, isn't that a crossover between some of the other shows too? Oh, it might be. I'm not sure. I'm not, I, just, I feel I, like I saw uh, some of the, uh, the the characters in the trailer that were on another series, but I don't. I'm not sure. Like, I'm not really sure. But I did see the trailer sure. for that. I remember Jennifer Love Hewitt was in it, and it just aired. I think what last week. Yeah, I think it just started there. Yeah, <clears throat> I was doing I was doing promos for it. Uh, what about three weeks ago? Three or four okay. weeks ago? Yeah, leading leading up to and and yeah, just started to be on. So, so that was stuff. Yeah, there's always something out there floating around. Yeah, and it's cool. Um, you know, we we talked to Vincent Carrazzo a while ago. He's a Resident Evil alumni, and you know, he's he played a, a pretty good character a while back, a, a very popular character. But he uh, he is the voice of the Colbert Show. For the, the oh, trailers, cool. oh, I got blown up. <laughs> but it's it, people don't realize that it's like you know them from the series, and you recognize them as the actor, the part from the series, but you don't know that they're out there, kind of in your lives every day. <laughs> if you sit down oh, and watch sure. TV, you've heard Christopher in a lot of commercials, and uh, you know, and doing the promo for um, for nine one one. Right. Yeah. No. It's 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 the uh, interesting dynamic of voiceover is. Yeah. Is uh, you 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 get hurt a lot, but nobody knows what you look like, uh, yeah. who you are. You're yeah. this in, disembodied voice somewhere in their lives. I have probably I have probably sold you a Starbucks double shot, and you didn't even know it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, awesome. A, a friend of mine. Speaking of that, like you know, like the iconic because it's really part of the show is uh, Iron Chef. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like the so like the side announcer like where you hear the voice are going like okay so he's doing this so oh, he's incorporating eel eel you know like all that um, that uh, I guess they're doing like a reboot or something or they they did a, a recast of it and a friend of mine Mike Greco um, just got cast to be the new voice of Iron Chef and I'm oh, like cool. oh that's that's so badass yeah. it's like one of those things like nobody will know who, you know like just like any of us when we get these jobs you know you don't really necessarily know who the person is. Um, but you know the voice, though. I yeah. mean, if you ever saw Iron Chef, you're like, oh yeah, the voice. Yeah. But but I, I but before before uh, Mike booked the role, I mean, now I'll know who the voice is. But I realized I didn't know who the voice was back when I first started watching that when I was a kid. You know. Yeah, yeah. What uh, what kind of gear do you have? If you if you do a lot of traveling, you do a lot of recording out of your, you know, wherever you're staying at. What do you use as far as uh, your setup, your your yeah. traveling booth and everything? Yeah, so it's a mix of stuff. Like depending on where I am, I'll jump into studios uh, locally, okay. right? Um, where you know, if there's kind of if it's if it's if that's needed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I roll with a pretty basic setup. I got a Sennheiser 416 microphone that I that I love that I've had a long time. Okay, um, it's what it's what I'm talking to you now on. Yeah, it sounds great, by the way. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that is that's that's my my sword. Uh, my uh, USB interface is a mic port pro that I just put, pull into a laptop. Okay. And then after that, it's just kind of knowing my software. Um, I just I use a very obscure piece of software in the VO world that nobody has heard of called Sound Studio 4. Um, that uh, that I just kind of always have used, know my settings, and that's most of the time when you hear me, that's my setup. That's what I recorded it through. Okay. It sounds good. I like it. It's a really good microphone. Um, oh, I, I, I need to it. upgrade mine here eventually. It's very forgiving. It's yeah. very forgiving of, of uh, unpredictable. 
full environments. I just, um, I didn't, it's not the Chaotic Eyeball, it's the, what is this, Altron PF8. I picked that up for my mic recently to kind of kill some of the, uh, the echo in here, because I don't have my setup like I used to where I'm going to, uh, location that would, you know, re reduces all the echo that I normally get. I'm going to open room now. It helps out a little bit. I need to, uh, put up some, some, uh, soundproofing in here, though. <laughs> yeah. Put up a few panels. Uh, do you, uh, do, does most of your work come from your agent, or do you actually have to look for auditions? Uh, mostly through the agencies. Uh, majority of it comes through agencies and management. I have multiple agencies, different regions, um, and for different, uh, mediums. Okay. And so, yeah, most of it there. Some freelance stuff, I get regular clients that uh, like my stuff that I know from the past, from past work. So some of it's kind of freelance and direct, but most of it comes through the agencies. Okay. A lot of repeat customers, a lot of these big brands still coming back to you? Uh, yeah, yeah, some, you know, they keep coming back and ha happy to work with them. I just got hit with a truck. Oh. <laughs> that sucked. Yeah, how do I even avoid that? <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't. It so was if, a dodge. If he throws a truck at you, that's it. <laughs> you can't avoid that. Apparently not. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if I just get off of this building. Yeah. That's probably a good idea. That guy's dead. Yeah. I'm setting charges on the anti-aircraft guns now. Stop shooting the Finn. Leave him alone. Finn's a nice guy. Yeah, Adam had told us, um, I'm not dead again, I'm just hurt. Uh, he actually had auditioned for the voice of Finn. Um, oh yeah? Yeah, but he didn't He didn't get the part, but, but he, at least he tried for it, so. Finn, I know who did the voice of Finn. I, is it Sam Regal? Did Sam Regal do the voice of Finn? I or... actually don't know. I'd have to look that one up. Maybe it's not, maybe it's not. It's, uh, oh, shoot. I know who did it, though. Uh, yeah, I'll look it up. <laughs> now I gotta, now I have to know. <laughs> right? <laughs> Kills me. I'm glad we were able to put this together. This is something I really like doing. It's a new, uh, new thing that I started to work out. We're doing the live streams with the actual game, and the, you know, the voice of the person in the game is pretty awesome. No, yeah, this is so cool, and thanks for having me, seriously. And everybody that's uh, listening and watching, I, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. I'm glad you reached out. It, it worked out nicely how we end up getting in touch. Yeah, it really did. And that's, so, it so was, yeah, uh, thank you. Definitely one of my easier guests. <laughs> and I'm glad Yuri, that you, were, you were so Yuri, excited. Yuri like, yes, he, he wants to be here. <laughs> All right, this will be I, I, want to, I want to do this. Are you kidding me? I love it. Uh, Yuri, I got it wrong, not Sam. Uh, Yuri Lowenthal, who oh, is a, yeah. who is Actually, an amazing yeah. voice actor, he really and is, yeah. Uh, yeah, an expert in accents and voices, and you know, uh, 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 what do I say, affectations, like character affectations. So that oh, yeah. you find Yuri to be very talented, man. Yeah, Yuri's a he, he's one of the uh, he's pretty big time. He's done a lot of great characters. We just, I think we just finished this part of the campaign, right? Mm -hmm. I smell a Jake Mueller coming up. Do you smell a Jake Mueller? There he is. <laughs> you look familiar. <laughs> you look familiar. But, uh... You know, he was an interesting addition to the, the series. I like how Pierce gets mad. <laughs> Don't you talk to my captain that way. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this moment. Right here, right here. Right here. Oh, yeah. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm so mad right now. I like, yeah, he just goes over, he takes this big breath. Like, oh. <laughs> then they quick time out. <laughs> I want to eat some meat. <laughs> I want a job with a drill. <laughs> it appears his nickname in boot camp was the Jackhammer. <laughs> We're going to write our own story behind this now. <laughs> Or maybe, or maybe it's not. Maybe he's like, oh, I really want to play Jenga. <laughs> we play Jenga. <laughs> or no. Maybe, maybe that's how he relaxes. That's his meditation. <laughs> Takes a big breath and he's like, oh, I want to knit something. <laughs> I got, I got a knit. <laughs> Everybody has their way of decompressing. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
This is, uh, I like this though. I don't usually get to play from the perspective of peers, so <laughs> it's different. Okay, we got a bunch of uh, cocoon people all reaching out because that's how we all die. Picking up life form readings. Are we supposed to do something here or just walk through the area? Walk through. Okay. Like badasses. And we mentioned and we mentioned Jake there for a second. I don't think you I don't think you get to see Jake much more like at all in the Chris Pierce campaign, do you? No, not until the end. In, in the until end, the, yeah, they, until they come across each other again. Yeah, Troy Baker. Troy Baker, yeah. The man, the myth, the legend, Troy Baker. I was just gonna say it. Yeah. You were gonna say that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he is, he is, he, he's a he force of nature, that man. Yeah. Pretty much everything. Infamous, uncharted. <laughs> Yeah. Laugh Every, laugh everything. Person. Seriously. Yep. There are two kinds of games in this world: games with Troy Baker and games without Troy Baker. And <laughs> What's the there's game way more, there's and, way more of that category. And games of Troy with with uh, or games with Nolan North. <laughs> That's the two types there are. <laughs> Nolan North. Yeah. Yeah, those guys are amazing. They're they're, you know, uh, they're in everything, <laughs> and for good reason. <laughs> I, I gotta say though, his performance in The Last of Us was yeah. Still Amazing. my favorite game. Epic, epic. I got, yeah, I get to, I get to do a little Last of Us. I was, uh, I was a couple NPCs uh, or brief characters and NPCs here. Oh, nice. There. Yeah, in uh, Last of Us, that was very cool. So, like yeah. in the very, very, the very first fort, some of the allied rebels in there. I, I'm, I'm one of the first guys in there. Somewhere throughout the middle of the game, I didn't play it all the way through, but uh, somewhere in the, in the middle of the game, and then at the very, very end. Or I guess it's the very end. Snipers and stuff that want the girl handed over. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, screaming stuff like just hand her over, you know all that. Uh, that was very cool. That was a very cool game to work on. Yeah, that game is is my favorite. I love The Last of Us so much. I love the story. Uh, all the yep. acting behind it is is phenomenal. That game was pretty much the game that proved to me that gaming is becoming way more popular than movies. Yeah, it's. Oh yeah. It, it touches yeah. on storytelling that things can't. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to play it all the way through. I just got sidetracked. Um, but man, that opening sequence. Yes. Just that alone. That that's like Academy yeah. Award worthy. Yeah. Um, and uh, oh yeah, I, I gotta get back to that. I, I gotta get back to that game. Yeah, two's coming out pretty quick here. Next yep. year. Yep. Yep. I'm assuming next year. They haven't officially announced a date, but probably next year. <laughs> They need to have mercy on our souls and give us that release date already. Yeah. Uh, okay, what, it won't let me pick up the shotgun shells, but it tells me I don't have any shotgun ammo. You're not worthy. Apparently. Like, you can tell me, no, you can't have these <laughs> shotgun shells. Why? <laughs> Why can't I have them? Alright. Oh, your inventory's probably full. I have an inventory? <laughs> yes. Yeah, maybe I should do something. Oh, hey, Up look at all these grenades I have. <laughs> Up and down on your directional pad. How do I use it? Um, okay. Oh crap, let's not die. <laughs> Up and down on the directional pad. That's a good idea. Let's... No, not that button. This whole time I've had 10 grenades in my inventory. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't like that. Oh. I figured out how to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> Lack of er, uh, I, I can actually, good. <laughs> I can actually use these grenades. What do these grenades do? I knew I was picking them up. I just had no oh. idea. <laughs> you had one, one job. <laughs> one job. You had one job. Here's You're the grenade guy. <laughs> Even he knows Ollie, and he's new. Get good. <laughs> Get good. Everybody Get knows. Good. <laughs> Get good. Be better. <laughs> see, see, here it is. Now that's all I'm going to use is grenades. <laughs> Stop breaking all the boxes, Chris. <laughs> but I like to punch boulders. <laughs> Listening to uh, <laughs> or playing a game like The Last of Us and hearing your voice is it, is it cool to come across like, oh, hey, that was me. <laughs> It, I, it, yeah, it actually caught me by surprise because uh, Last of Us for me was very non-linear. Like I had no, because uh, it wasn't major characters, and so I came in. It was actually Liam. It was uh, Liam O'Brien again. Yeah, yeah. Um, that uh, was voice directing, and he brought me in for it. And we uh, did lots of effort sounds because uh, it was, it was more NPCs and and you know randos and stuff. So it was, 
it uh, a lot of grunting, a lot of screaming, a lot of bullets and punching things, taking punches. And um, the uh, the characters that I did do, they were small insert characters, so I had no idea chronologically, story the storyline wise, I would never know where they were. And so I watched. Someone was someone told me like, I don't care if you play the game or not, you have to watch the beginning of Last of Us. Yeah. yeah. And so and so I so I revved it up. I watched the opening sequence. Was completely blown away. And then I played like maybe 15 minutes of gameplay. And right inside the first few minutes, when they're walking through the the base there, and he's, he's it's, I think it's within the first five minutes of gameplay. There's a buddy. There's like a rebel buddy guy. I think he's a big black dude with like dreads or something. Um, looking looking pretty meaty, and I was, and I had no idea that that was going to be the visual of the character. And I'm like, wow, okay, cool, that's awesome, that's sure, you know. Um, and um, and and so the, yeah, that was that was that was very cool. And then I think. Did I find? I think I did a little YouTubing and I found some of the last sequence stuff of the, the soldier, uh, shouting and the kind of climactic sniperish stuff. Yeah. And and uh, and found those and and but yeah, it's it's super fun. Yeah, it's super fun to come across it and and, and it was cool in that regard too because I was completely not expecting it. I thought I was going to play like ten minutes of gameplay, and never hear me. Yeah. necessarily because you're one of you the know, first prob- voices they hear in the actual but game boom game yeah game. i'm like wait that's me that's me hanging out in the rebel base that's that's <laughs> super cool awesome that's super cool looking like a badass i dig yeah. it <laughs> and that's the cool part too because like because you were saying like uh my 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 look from the pictures might be more chris redfield or something yeah. but honestly like in i'm 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 all of about five six so the uh <laughs> The movies, the movies would never cast me as the as these soldiers. I, I I am I am a smaller framed individ, individual that uh, my my voice might uh, be able to be some of these soldiers, but but physically I, I, I look nothing like these guys. Nah, it's <laughs> fine with these tricks. Of the well, you know what? They they could do it for Tom Cruise. They could do it for you. <laughs> Ah, that's true. I could always stand on an Apple box. The yeah. Tom, bring in the bring in the Tom Cruise shoes. Yeah, bring in the Tom Cruise shoes. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I'm going to throw some more grenades out there since I have all of them. Did that help? <laughs> Was that good? Ooh, he didn't like that. Are we supposed to kill these things or just get out of here? Get out of here. Okay. Well, then I'm not wasting any more grenades or ammo. <laughs> He's up here just waiting for me to get the door. Get the medallion. I don't know where the medallion's at. Stop yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> So we give you just a little bit of a heads up here. I think about the top of the hour, so we might have to wrap up about 15 yeah, yeah. minutes. Yeah, we're uh, we're approaching uh, the two-hour mark here, and that's where we're going to actually stop it for everybody who's watching. I really appreciate everybody tuning in, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you have any last questions you want to throw out there, make sure you uh, put them in the chat so we can uh, ask them. I've been trying to keep an eye on it. I can neither confirm nor deny that in the last 15 minutes of the show, there might be mentions of giraffes. Giraffes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're at that point now where things might we're at, happen. We're at the, the, yeah, this is the giraffe hour. <laughs> Pour the martinis. Sorry, AJ. Here come the, here come the giraffes. <laughs> here come the giraffes. <laughs> and out came the bats. <laughs> to be fair, Christopher's having, like, mercy on my soul. I don't think I could stomach much more. Yeah. <laughs> Where are they going? Why are they running away? That monster is pointing. All right, cool. I did it. Yeah, I think we're reaching the end of this this part of the the game, anyways. This chapter. Yeah, this is the end of the chapter. So yeah, it's perfect timing. That'd be a good place to wind it down. <clears throat> oh, he's gonna blow the door. <laughs> I want to get back. Ada, 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 chameleon. <laughs> Can I trash something here? I mean, I've been carrying all this junk with me the whole time. Oh, no, you might want to just run for the door. Oh, okay, never mind. I guess I don't need uh, any shotgun there shells or anything. There's a bunch of things hatching. Hatching? Oh, yeah. Solid, solid idea. Well, thank you, Ozma, for tuning in. Thank all of you so much. I'm glad you guys were here. Again, if you want to donate to um, Extra Life, we are doing the Extra Life campaign this, uh, oh, well, pretty much through the rest of the year. Yeah, if somebody wants to post that link again in the chat. Oh, these things don't like flashbangs, huh? No, they don't. Oh, good 
get away from me. Get away from me. <laughs> oh, hey, I can see your camera if I hold the O button in. Wait, what? If I'm on a door and I'm waiting Oh, wait you're waiting at the you? door. My bad. <laughs> Sorry, I'm over here fighting things. I didn't know we were at that point already. Ow. Oh, body went. checked. Yeah, he just body checked me to the wall. <laughs> he must be hockey. <laughs> NHL, yeah. In Soviet Russia. RE6 NHL edition. <laughs> Where are you? I don't even see you. I'm lost. You'll see me. Okay. You should be coming down a pair of steps. Ah, there it is. Yeah, there's the stairs. Yeah, I'm watching your camera, so. <laughs> Everybody's like, it's about time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was saving the world. There we go. Is this it? Yep. Is this yes. it? The pivotal cutscene? The pivotal cutscene. The reason why Chris <laughs> Redfield drinks cheap tequila in a bar <laughs> in the future. In, you, in the Ukraine. <laughs> in the Ukraine, yeah. I don't know about the tequila out there. <laughs> not, probably not tequila, yeah. For some reason, it's a Mexican bar. Mexican bar. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like a drink. Bottom shelf, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <clears throat> oh, no. Conveniently stuck only them in there and not uh, yours. <laughs> hashtag not my Ada. Yep. <laughs> hashtag not my Ada. The amazing Courtney. Courtney's Jeez. done so many great games as well. Finn was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But um, kiss. Oh man. Chris, just punch it. Hey, look, Ollie, you looked at him. I did. <laughs> he caught on fire. My bad. <laughs> Poor Finn. Poor Yuri. Ah. Mm. Uh. Yep. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> Arctic says you really went there. <laughs> yeah. I, yep. I really, really did. <laughs> Wait, who said that? Uh, Arctic is in the chat. Arctic Fox. Oh, okay. Do we have to kill these? Um, no. No? Oh. Cutting. Is that really the end of it? Okay. Yep. Ooh, I'm just not oh. getting back on the So much for being badasses. Seriously. I don't know, that probably would have killed somebody else. He just just demolished. Chris wow. is now the boulder. That's how he got his amnesia. To so, be fair though, people have become roiding alcoholics for a lot less in their lives. For you know what I mean? Like, yeah, this is this is this is hardcore stuff. We can we can forgive. <laughs> it's acceptable. You know? Alright. And that is the cutoff. Yeah. Uh, Accuracy wasn't too bad. I was closer on my kill count this time to you. <laughs> yeah. Now that I figured out how to do things. <laughs> now that I got good. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, wind this down here. I'm going to jump out of my game and switch it over. So, uh, Christopher. For anybody you. who hasn't played yeah. the game yet, the story uh, from here gets very beautiful. Uh, you should uh, check it out sometime. Yes. Play it all the way to the end, especially where the unicorns and the cats with the lasers come in. <laughs> best part. So, best part. It's, it's the best part. It's my, it's my favorite part. IGN, 10 out of 10. Unicorn cats. <laughs> unicorn cats. <laughs> with lasers. Too much water. 2 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, too much water. Once you're done, go on YouTube and search RE6 Chris Redfield, Piers Nevins, Ada Wong. Okay? <laughs> we'll have to look for that. <laughs> Um, you know what's, you know what's mm -hmm. funny is I realized while talking to you guys that so I was so um, oh what's the word brainwashed no that's not the right word uh, <laughs> I was I was but it was just beaten into me by Capcom by everybody to make sure that no storylines were spoiled and I mean they were super super serious about it right yeah like yeah. confidentiality agreements and it was really important about how these these campaigns end and stuff like that. And so I made sure, everybody made sure that no matter the interview or when it was said or whatever, that we just absolutely could not let these these secrets go. And I realize even like six years after the fact, and you guys are like saying stuff, I realize I'm I'm kind of censoring myself to say outright that Piers dies in the end. <laughs> you know, even Spoiler. saying that now, even saying that right now, I'm kind of looking over my shoulder. Oh my like, is Capcom, is Capcom still listening? You know? I just want to give a shout out quick. We got... A donation from Fallen for what is it? Twenty five dollars from Fallen for Extra Life. Thank you. Thank you, Fallen. You're awesome. So Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. 
Yes. We are now at two hundred and ninety six dollars out of our five hundred dollar goal for the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. Awesome. Thank you everybody for your support. <laughs> and Adam Grossman, don't say shit. <laughs> also now that I can see the chat. Hi Adam. <laughs> yeah, hello to everybody that AJ has did, been ignoring the whole did, time. <laughs> did Adam did Adam say that? Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's still hanging out. Um, we got a bunch of people hanging out. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. Uh, Christopher, do you have any um, social media plugs? you want people to come follow you on social media? Uh, sure. You can pretty much find me on any platform at Planet Emerson. So whether it's Twitter, Instagram. I spend more time. I probably spend more time actually like producing things, um, posting things on Instagram. Okay. But, uh, but uh, yeah, Facebook page, Planet Emerson. Twitter, Planet Emerson. Instagram, you Planet Emerson. What, sir, I shall do you a solid, and I will put your Twitter in the chat. Yeah, definitely. Oh, awesome. Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, go follow Christopher. Show him your love and support. Uh, and would, any so. final uh, parting words to everybody? Um, So there's this egg and this chicken. <laughs> They're laying in bed together. <laughs> the egg is smoking a cigarette, leans over to the chicken and says, so since we answered that question, now what do you want to do? It's <laughs> my, my favorite joke. That is awesome. I love it. I've never actually heard that one before. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, and I got a message from Yukeko on Twitter. They said, thank you for this amazing opportunity. Now I have to start working. After that, I definitely want to watch it. One of Piers' fans. Yeah. And they are from Japan. Oh, cool. Yeah, awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah, there's a lot very, of love for cool. and you have a big fan base with Resident Evil, and hopefully one of your many letters, your daily letters to Capcom, will bring you back. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to if, see you. If if I died at the end, I mean, I know I said it and all, but you, <laughs> if, don't, you don't know. Yeah, if you don't I know. really die. <laughs> it depends on how good you play the game. I don't think um, it really does. <laughs> But yeah. well, if all we're playing it, we're pretty much cursed. So. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a huge fan base out there for Piers. There's there's actually a fan base out there that that ships Piers and Chris. Yeah, so that's fine yep, too. Yep. <laughs> yep. There's a lot. There's lots of that. I can I can appreciate it. Well, the characters had chemistry. Um, <laughs> hey, you know, seriously, I I dig it. Yeah. Um, there needs to be more. Uh, uh, fan fiction about the giraffe, though. To be <laughs> uh, but uh, no, and then and, and a little uh, fun shout out uh, because I crazy love every single one of you that are listening and the fans and the people that love this game, uh, the character, and it just it really really has always meant a lot from day one of launch to even six years later and forever and beyond. It uh, it truly truly means a lot. I crazy love it. I just recently uh, received a fantastic message from somebody on Tumblr of all places. I haven't spent time on Tumblr yeah. in in millennia. And yet um, somebody posted over there just saying how much uh, a particular interview that I did six years ago meant to them about uh, lack of judgment um, uh, for the LGBT community and having to do with fan fiction with uh, Chris and Piers. And so, you know, all of it. I embrace it all. I love it all. And I'm so happy that uh, whether it's an interview I did or the storyline or the character um, or the franchise as a whole, uh, it's it's uh, fantastic to be a part of. I, I have I have uh, so much gratitude to be a part of this universe with uh, with all you guys. Yeah, definitely. And we're glad to have you. And we're glad to have you on the show. This was fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Very much so. Loved it. I lo and I love the format too. It's the first time that I got to see some gameplay in a very long time and getting to talk to you while while watching it all is yeah. super fun. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm gonna get some dim sum. <laughs> right, some thirteen dollar dim sum. <laughs> yeah. I've been I've been I've been hungry since I spotted that. Yeah, well, so. we're cooking dinner here and it smells amazing. <laughs> like I'm, ready, <laughs> I'm ready to go eat as well. But thank you, uh, really. I'm glad that we were able to work this out, and thank you to your agent for for getting us together. Um, and I'm glad you were so excited to come on here. This is this was just a great moment, and uh, we're going to be uploading it to YouTube for anybody who couldn't watch this live. You can watch it on YouTube later, or if you want to go back and watch certain parts or uh, drop some comments in there. Uh, for Christopher to see at a later date, you know, when he goes through and checks it out. And, um, that's pretty much it for me, though. AJ, you got any uh, last things? Uh, just thank you for actually giving us this opportunity to do this with the fans. And, you know, thank you for bringing Piers alive. Yeah. My pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. And thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you. 
All right, well, that's going to be it. We're going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for those who supported the uh, Extra Life. We're still doing that. And thank you, Christopher, for coming on. Thank you, Adam, for hanging out in the chat and uh, and giving us some insight from the from the face modeling part and everything. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Stay tuned. We will be back again uh, with our next stream. And we're working out some other big things down the road. So thank you guys for everything. We love you. And we will see you here next time on Beyond the Fandom. <laughs>